It is a beautiful Sabbath day, and I would like to thank you for uh, joining me. I praise God the Father and His only begotten Son and their spirit, the spirit of the living God and the divine Son of God, Jesus Christ, is indeed working today. I have here two books, um, The Great Controversy. One is, um, uh, this has been uh, given to me uh, when I was pastoring in Southern California. It is um, called The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan, The Conflict of the Ages in the Christian Dispensation, and has been copyrighted 1888. 1907, 1911 by Mrs. Ellen G. White. Copyright renewed, 1939, and the text copyright 1950 by the E. G. White publication. So, this I believe is the 1950 uh, edition, which was uh, not from the 1884, which was given also to me. It's called the, the Spirit of Prophecy, the Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan, Volume 4. And the controversy ended by Ellen G. White, 1884. This was given to me by a friend from um, the western part of uh, America. Um, and uh, I was told this is the um, uh, original... Uh, copy of the, uh, I mean, the original uh, message of the Great Controversy. So I'd just like to have a little comparison here and there. And uh, at the get-go, I have uh, learned that uh, there are indeed, um, uh, there are indeed, uh, huge or major uh, additions. I don't know who wrote them. I don't know who edited. And I don't know who subtracted because I also discovered some omissions. And I tried to check the internet um, because there are different uh, um, revisions of this uh, uh, message and the Ellen G. White estate could not give a satisfying answer. Um, they just said that it is um, changed by uh, Sister White herself. So as I compared the message, specifically um, the chapter called The Snares of Satan here, it's in uh, 32, chapter 32, the snares, snares of Satan. But here in the 1884, uh, chapter 30, uh, 27, the snares of Satan. I don't know if you could see it. Um, and there are huge additions and a mission. What I mean huge is uh, the meaning of the message is impacted. And so I uh, thought it wise because when I was uh, in high school, I read the other version, which was renamed The Triumph of God's Love. And I believe it was for commercial purposes to sell the book. And I assume that that is based on this, um, or if not revised from the 1950 copyright. And also you can trace it from 1911 uh, revisions, and there have been changes. But today I would like to um, share with you the message from the 1884, uh, volume four. Chapter 27, The Snares of Satan, which is not included, the critical parts are not included in the 1911 through 1950 revisions. So 
my goal here is just to read and probably give uh, some insights, which was not found in the great controversy that I am accustomed to quote and use when I was preaching. And uh, to my uh, astonishment, uh, astonishment, there had been critical um, changes, which if, if, if not for the Spirit of God and the trained eye, probably the, the, the reader will not be able to detect or discern the changes or the subtle change of words and the message will be, uh, will be uh, diluted and the message will not have its pure impact of truth. So I would like to bring back um, the 1884 message of Ellen G. White from the book, The Great Controversy, the chapter, The Snares of the, the Snares of Satan, which is not included. The first few paragraphs, the many paragraphs here are not included in the revisions after Ellen G. White had passed away in 1915, if I'm not mistaken. So let me read the 1884. And if you have time, uh, you can compare it with the, your copy of The Great Controversy, if you have. If you don't have them, uh, you can listen to the 1884 version. As the people of God approach the perils of the last days, Satan holds earnest, consultation with his angels as to the most successful plan of overthrowing their faith. He sees that the popular churches are already lulled to sleep by his deceptive power. By pleasing sophistry and lying wonders, he can continue to hold them under his control. Therefore, he directs his angels to lay their snares, especially for those who are looking for the second advent of Christ and endeavoring to keep all the commandments of God. That's the first paragraph of this, uh, of this uh, 1884 version. If you compare that to, 18, uh, to the 1950 uh, edition, you cannot find this introduction. And I don't know where they get the, uh, where they, who wrote and where did they where did this addition come from? It's a good three pages, one, two, three pages that are that are added, but they are not in the 1884 um, 1884 message. There are speculations, maybe I'm guessing. Sister Ellen G. White re revised this 1884 document, but I think the message is, is important and Mrs. White should be able to know if uh, what she, he, she is writing was from God or not because she, she, uh, she, was, uh, she ac accepted the call to uh, become God's messenger. So I just hope and pray that people will be led to the true message. This is my, my point. And I'm not discounting the power and the, the message of the 1911 um, and the 1950 revisions. But I like us to understand and feel the impact of, of the, um, the context in 1884 and the, the message that was given to Sister Ellen G. White. Let me read the second paragraph, which is not also included in the, in the chapter, the 1950, not included. And this is, um, this is a good message, the way I see it. That's why I'm sharing it to you. Let me read 1884, Great Controversy, chapter 27, The Snares of Satan, the second paragraph. Says the great deceiver, we must watch those who are calling the attention of the people to the Sabbath of Jehovah. They will lead many to see the claims of the law of God. 
And the same light which reveals the true Sabbath reveals also the ministration of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary and shows that the last work for man's salvation is now going forward. Hold the minds of the people in darkness till that work is ended and we shall secure the world and the church also. End of the second paragraph. This is the deceiver. Sister White seems to, um, to be listening to the conversation of the enemy of God and his people and then sharing it and writing it. So this is um, uh, an intelligent intelligence work because it seems like Sister White was um, given the access or perhaps to spy on the works of the devil to to um, uh, uh, to warn God's true people about the inside uh, insider information or insider strategy of the devil. So this is critical. That's why I'm sharing this with you. And this is not in the uh, later editions. So think about it. I don't know if this was deliberately withhold from us or because this could not sell, the message could not sell, could have found many uh, Catholics or evangelicals. I don't know. So just, just be guided by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to understand the message. So the message here, the get-go, is the Sabbath and the sanctuary. So um, let me continue reading the third paragraph. The Sabbath is the great question which is to decide the destiny of souls. We must exalt the Sabbath of, of our creating, the devil's saying here. Huh? We have caused it to be accepted by both worldlings and church members. Now the church must be led to unite with the world in its support. We must work by signs and wonders to blind their eyes to the truth and lead, lead them to lay aside reason and the fear of God and follow custom and tradition. End of the, of the paragraph. That's the third paragraph. In my thinking, friends, uh, Sister White was uh, retelling us from what he had heard or seen in the councils of the devil, the strategy, and that is the counterfeit Sabbath. And my understanding is, I'm not confused as I read this, it's Sunday. So Mrs. White is trying to warn us about the strategy, the snares of the devil. Let me read the fourth paragraph here. I will influence popular ministers. Still the devil say, speaking and Mrs. White retelling us, uh, telling us the insider information. I will influence popular ministers to turn the attention of their hearers from the commandments of God, that which the scriptures declare to be a perfect law of liberty shall be represented as a yoke of bondage. The people accept their minister's explanation of scripture and do not investigate for themselves. Therefore, by working through the ministers, I can control the people according to my will. And of quote, uh, Satan speaking here, uh, us being... Uh, told to us by M.G. White. Wow! So when I read this, I was, I was uh, caught in an, uh, in a, in a controversy myself. These informations were withheld for many years because I've been reading the later editions. So either this 1884 great controversy is. Uh, not worthy to be reprinted or republished or or the later revisions uh, are what mrs white wanted to express but i doubt because this is a real message from the um, insider information of sister white from the devil's um, lair from the mouth of satan himself what he wants to do and so it's either we have faith in the message and the messenger of the lord or or we just are being confused by the 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 latter ad, uh, additions and we are thrown off of uh, track so i don't know if this is sinister or deliberate or unconscious or just trying to 
um, uh, clarify for the for the present culture or the uh, di differentiate the culture of 1884 uh, timeline to the 1900s timeline. I don't have a clue. I'm just sharing to you the message. Let me read uh, the fifth paragraph. But our principal concern, still Satan speaking here, is to silence the sect of Sabbath keepers. We must excite popular indignation against them. We will enlist great men and worldly wise men upon our side and in induce those in authority to carry out our purposes. Then the Sabbath, which I have set up, shall be enforced by laws, the most severe and exacting. Those who disregard them shall be driven out from the cities and villages and made to suffer hunger and privation. When once we have the power, we will show what we can do with those who will not swerve from their allegiance to God. We led the Romish church to inflict imprisonment, torture, and death upon those who refused to yield her decrees. And now that we are bringing the Protestant churches and the world into harmony with this right arm of our strength, we will finally have a law to exterminate all who will not submit to our authority. When death shall be made the penalty of violating our Sabbath, Satan says, then many who are now ranked with commandment keeping keepers will come over to our side. End of quote. End of the fifth paragraph. So Sister White, if she is the real deal messenger of the Lord, had given us the insider information. A spy who, who warned us what Satan is planning. This, this information is not found in the latter revisions. I'm just repeating, uh, I'm just reiterating that these statements are being withheld. Why, why are these being withheld? Because they are very, very cutting and straight. Why? Because Satan calls Sunday as his own Sabbath, which is popularized by the Roman Catholic Church the Protestant churches, and the world, which is exactly what's happening not only during the time of Sister Ellen G. White, but in our present time, August 6, 2022. So I thought about the message and I said, this makes sense. And this is the first time I was able to uh, hear, listen from my own reading based on this 1884 just one chapter, great controversy. How much more the other chapters? So you could tell right now why these things are being withhold, deleted, or uh, or not reprinted. But praise be to God, He was able to brought this edition back, the 1884, because to me it makes sense. Indeed, Sunday is Satan's Sabbath. That's what Sister White is saying. And I think this is the reason why this was omitted because it's so straight. It's probably it's probably going to be uh, a lot of trouble for, uh, for, uh, for the Seventh-day Adventist to publish this. So it's clear, Roman Catholic Church, Protestant churches, the world, they, they keep Satan's Sabbath, which is Sunday rest. Mrs. White said it, quoting the devil himself. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Very critical information. Solemn import impacting us right now as we observe the Sabbath and the true rest and worshiping the true God, the only true God, the only immortal, the, 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 the only immortal and his uh, divine son, Jesus Christ, who is also God by virtue of his being the son of God. So friends, I, I'm just, I'm just sharing this to you and I know it will not be popular and um, I don't know if people will be interested to study this, but I'm hoping, pray that someone will be able to share the joy of finding the truth 
in the message. The message is clear. But if you read the later revisions, you will not have clarity. You will have confusion. Yeah, you know Sunday, is, you know Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord, but you don't know that Sunday is the Sabbath of Satan, according to this version. That is the significant info. I praise God for, for the straight message. That's why this, this edition, 1884, was not uh, widely spread because of its content. It's dangerous to the enemy because it's like spilling the beans, leaking the strategy of the devil. Wow. Let me read the next paragraph here. That is just one, two, three, four, five, six paragraph, the seventh paragraph. But before proceeding to these extreme measures, we must exert, exert all our wisdom and subtlety to deceive and ensnare those who honor the true Sabbath. We can separate many from Christ by worldliness, lust, and pride. They may think themselves safe because they believe the truth, but indulgence of appetite or the lower passions, which will confuse judgment and destroy discriminating or cause their fall. End of quote. Even Satan recognizes the importance of health reform and dress reform in a nutshell, in my understanding. I'm just sharing to you because worldliness, lust, and pride, these are all health reform issue, dress reform issue, um, lifestyle reform issue. During the time of LMG White, there are worldliness, lust, and pride. During our time now, 2022, it's extreme. Worldliness, lust, and pride. Wow, what a message. First person, um, first person eyewitness listening to the strategy of the devil. So from here on, we can say either Ellen G. White is a false prophet or Ellen G. White is a true prophet of God because how can he be able to get access to the strategy? the devices, the stairs of the devil, if not God allowed her to see and hear the walls of the devil. So this is what I'm trying to share with you. And I believe because this is what's happening. And the church members may not, some of the Adventist church members or other churches may not like what they will hear from this message. Let me read the next paragraph. Still Satan and his uh, committee are doing their business. Let me quote. Go, make the possessors of lands and money drunk with the cares of this life. Present the world before them in its most attractive light that they may lay up their treasure here and fix their affections upon earthly things. We must do our utmost to prevent those who labor in God's cause from obtaining means to use against us. Keep the money in our ranks. The more means they obtain, the more they will endure our kingdom by taking from us our subjects. Make them care more for money than for the upbuilding of Christ's kingdom and the spread of the truths we hate. And we need not fear their influence, for we know that every selfish, covetous person will fall under our peak power and will finally be separated from God's people. And quote, Satan saying this and Mrs. White telling us. Wow, this is... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just deeply moved by the message. It is true. Oh Lord, help me. Have mercy upon me. I'm, I'm, I'm the one being trapped by the devil. In just reading the scripture, and the, what I mean in just reading the testimony of Ellen G. White, the, the. Uh, Spirit of prophecy, the first hand information, the leaked info about the snares of the devil, which is not in this edition, 1950 or 1911 onwards. I'm not sure of the other edition. I just read um, this, this book. Oh, friends, oh, friends, it's clear. God would like to bless us with money so that we will be able to share the truth. 
but Satan would like to withhold that money to the right people because he knows, Satan knows that it will, uh, it will destroy his plans. And it's just amazing how he, how he say that to his angels, demonic angels, to make God's people selfish and greedy, covetous. Wow. And that is exactly what's happening now. And that is exactly what's happening now. Friends, if you have an ear to hear, please, I, I plead with you to join me in this uh, in this search for the truth. This is a warning. We are being ensnared by the devils with the cares of life, money, earthly things. Exactly what's happening among God's remnant people. But praise be to God, there are people right now who are not bowing to the snares or not allowing the snares of the devil to destroy them. How would I know this if not reading what Mrs. White said in 1884? Because I believe that when God gave her the message, that's the truth for the time. The problem, is, the problem now is as we read the revisions, the message has been diluted and diluted and we are being sent off track. Uh, we focus on the Sabbath. We are not focusing on our selfishness and our, our covetousness, our uh, motivations and everything. And we don't understand the connection of the Sabbath with, with the true God and righteousness of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. It's loose end. So as a, search, a searcher, I'm trying to go back to the message and understand the message and return to the true faith. Help me, Lord, as I share this. Let me continue reading the next paragraph here of the snares of the devil. And I call, through those that have a form of godliness, but know not the power, we can gain many who would otherwise do us great harm. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, will be our most effective helpers. Those of this class who are apt and intelligent will serve as decoys to draw others into our snares. Many will not fear their influence because they profess the same faith. We will thus lead them to conclude that the requirements of Christ are less strict than they once believed and that by conform, conformity to the world, they would exert a great, greater influence with worldlings. Thus, they will separate from Christ. Then they will have no strength to resist our power. And ere long, they will be ready to ridicule their former zeal and devotion. Satan is using the ministers in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, leaders, thought leaders, leading men, popular evangelists. Amazing. And it's true. I confess it's true. Let me read the next paragraph. Until the great decisive blow shall be struck, our efforts against commandment keepers must be untiring. We must be present at all their gatherings and their large meetings, especially our cause will suffer much. And we must exercise great vigilance and employ all our seductive arts to prevent souls from hearing the truth and become, becoming impressed by it. And of course, that's the reason why that's the reason why many are blinded, many are deceived. The devil urges his followers to destroy the commandment keepers, the truth. Sabbath keepers. Wow, what an information. What an information. Let me continue reading. I will have upon the ground as my agents, men holding false doctrines, mingled with just enough truth to deceive souls. I will also have unbelieving ones present. 
who will express doubts in regard to the Lord's messages of warning to his church. Should the people read and believe these admonitions, we could have little hope of overcoming them. But if we can divert their attention from these warnings, they will remain ignorant of our power and cunning, and we shall secure them in our ranks at last. God will not permit his words to be slighted with impunity. If we can keep souls deceived for a time, God's mercy will be withdrawn, and he will give them up to our control. Wow. I just feel God is speaking to me right now, telling me what the enemy is planning to do with my soul and with the others. Wow. Let me continue reading. Satan speaking here and Sister White telling us, we must cause destruction, distraction and division. We must destroy their anxiety for their own souls and let them to criticize, to judge and to accuse and condemn one another and to cherish selfishness and enmity. For these sins, God banished, banished us from his presence and all who follow our example will meet a similar fate. In, in essence, Satan is honest and truthful and, and wise indeed. He knows what he's talking about. He's not lying for the sake of lying to his angels. He was telling the truth to his followers and angels. And because the angels know who God is, but they wanted to destroy others because they had been banished or or they were defeated in the battle, the great controversy in heaven. So now they're bringing the battle in our hearts and our minds. So Satan is the one causing distractions, distraction and division. And how divided is the church since the death of El Jilai? How huge and wide the gap of the truth and falsehood, the apostasy. But praise be to God, God has a few people left who are standing for the truth. And I'm glad to have been given this information and I'm sharing it with you. Let me read the next paragraph. The scriptures declare that upon one occasion when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came also among them not to bow before the eternal king Jesus Christ, but to further his own malicious designs against the righteous. With the same object, he is in attendance when men assemble for the worship of God. Though hidden from sight, he is working with full diligence to control the minds of the worshipers. Like a skillful general, he lays his plans beforehand as he sees the messenger of God searching the scriptures. He takes note on the subject to be presented to the people. Then he employs all his cunning and shrewdness to so control circumstances that the message may not reach those whom he is deceiving on that very point. The one who most needs the warning will be urged into some business transaction which requires his presence or will by some other means be prevented from hearing the words that might prove to him a savor of life unto life. Next paragraph. Again, Satan sees the Lord's servant's burden because of the spiritual darkness that enshrouds the people. He hears their earnest prayers for divine grace and power to break the spell of indifference, carelessness, and indolence. Then with renewed seal, he applies his arts. He tempts men to indulgence of appetite or to some other form of self-gratification and thus benumbs their sensibilities so that they fail to hear the very things which they most need to learn. I experienced this. It's very true. Lord, have mercy. Help us to spread this message. Help me. Help us to understand. Help me. I'll read the next paragraph. Satan well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures will be overcome by his attacks. Therefore, he invents every possible device to engross the mind. There has ever been a class professing godliness who, instead of following on to know the truth, 
make it their religion to seek some fault of character or error of faith in those with whom they do not agree. Such are Satan's right-hand helpers. Accusers of the brethren are not few, and they are always active when God is at work and his servants are rendering him true homage. They will put a false coloring upon the words and acts of those who love and obey the truth. They will represent the most earnest, zealous, self-denying servants of Christ as deceived or deceivers. It is their work to misrepresent the motives of every true and noble deed, to circulate insinuations and arouse suspicions in the minds of the experienced. In every inconceivable, in every conceivable manner, they will seek to cause that which is pure and righteous to be regarded as foul and deceptive. And in this work, the agents of Satan had their master and his angels to help them. Next paragraph. But none need be deceived concerning them. It may be readily seen whose children they are, whose example they follow. And whose work they do, ye shall know them by their fruits. They closely resemble Satan, the envenomed slanderer, the accuser of the brethren. Next paragraph. It is Satan's plan to bring into the church insincere, unregenerate elements that will encourage doubt and unbelief and hinder all who desire to see the work of God advanced and to advance with it. Many who had no real faith in God or in his word assent to some principles of truth and pass as Christians. And thus they are enabled to introduce their er errors as scriptural doctrines. End of quote that, uh, on that paragraph. How true the message of Ellen G. White, the snares of the devil here. There are so many unregenerated, insincere people who are now professing to be people of God, who are destroying God's truth. So many. I witnessed them, many of them. And so now I'm glad that I've been warned. Thanks be to God for this uh, publication of, uh, of the 1884 Great Controversy. Let me continue reading the next paragraph. The position that it is of no consequence what men believe is one of Satan's most successful deceptions. He knows that the truth received he, he knows that the truth received in the love of it sanctifies the soul of the receiver. Therefore, he is constantly seeking to substitute false theories, fables, another gospel. From the beginning, the servants of God have contended tended against false teachers, not merely as vicious men, but as inculcators of falsehood that were fatal to the soul. Elijah, Jeremiah, Paul firmly and fearlessly opposed those who were turning men from the word of God. That liberality, which regards a correct religious faith as unimportant, found no favor with those holy defenders of the truth. Next paragraph. The vague and fanciful interpretations of scripture and the many conflicting theories concerning religious faith that are found in the Christian world are the work of our great adversary to so confuse minds that they shall not discern the truth and the discord and division which exist among the churches of Christendom is in a great measure due to a prevailing custom of resting the scripture to support a favorite theory. Instead of carefully studying God's word with humility of heart to obtain a knowledge of his will, many seek only to discover something odd or original. In order to sustain, next paragraph, in order to sustain erroneous doctrines or unchristian practices, they seize upon the passages of scripture separated from the context perhaps quoting half of a single verse as, a proving, as proving their point, when the remaining portion would show the meaning to be quite the opposite. With the cunning of the serpent, they entrench themselves behind disconnected utterances, construed to suit their carnal desires. Thus, though many willfully 
pervert the word of God. Others who have an achieved active imagination seize upon the figures and symbols of holy writ, interpret to suit their fancy with a little regard to the testimony of scripture as its own interpreter. And then they present their vagaries as the teachings of God's word. Next paragraph. Whenever the study of the scripture is entered upon without a prayerful, humble, teachable spirit, the plainest and simplest as well as the most difficult passages will be wrested from their will be re wrested from their true meaning. The papal leaders select such portions of scriptures as best serve their purpose, interpret to suit themselves, and then present them to the people, while they deny then the privilege of studying the Bible and understanding its sacred truths for themselves. Unless the whole Bible is given to the, whole, to the people just as it reads, it would be better for them not to have it at all. Next paragraph. The Bible was designed to be a guide to all who wish to become acquainted with the will of their maker. God gave to men the sure word of prophecy. Angels and even Christ himself came to make known to Daniel and John the things that must surely, shortly come to pass. Those important matters that concern our salvation were not left involved in mystery. They were not revealed in such a way as to perplex and mislead the honest seeker after truth. Said the Lord with the prophet Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. The word of God is plain to all who study it with a prayerful heart. Every true, truly honest soul will come to the light of truth. Light is sown for the righteous. No church can advance in holiness unless its members are earnestly seeking the truth as for hid treasures. By the cry of liberality, men are blinded to the devices of their adversary. While he is at the why he is all the time working steadily for the accomplishment of his object. As he succeeds in supplanting the word of truth, by human speculations, the law of God is set aside, and the churches are under the bondage of sin while they claim to be free. To many, scientific research has become a curse. Their finite minds are so weak that they lose their balance. They cannot harmonize their views of science with scripture statements. And they think that the Bible is to be tested by their standard of science, falsely so-called. Thus they err from the faith and are seduced by the devil. Men have endeavored to be wiser than their creator. Human philosophy has attempted to search out and explain mysteries which will never be revealed through the eternal ages. If man would but search and understand what God has made known of himself and his purposes, they would obtain such a view of the glory, majesty, and the power of Jehovah that they would realize their own littleness and would be content with that which has been revealed for themselves and their children. Next paragraph. It is a masterpiece of Satan's deceptions to keep their mind, the minds of men searching and conjecturing in regard to that which God has not made known and which he does not intend that we shall understand. It was thus that Lucifer himself was cast out of heaven. He became dissatisfied because all the secret of God's purposes were not confided to him. And he entirely disregarded that which was revealed concerning his own work in the lofty position assigned him. By arouse, arousing the same contentment in the angels under his command, he ceased their fall. He caused their fall. Now he seeks to imbue the minds of men with the same spirit and to lead them also to disregard the direct commands of God. Next paragraph. Those who are unwilling to accept the plain cutting truths of the Bible are continually seeking for pleasing fables that will quiet their consciences. The less spiritual, self-denying, and humiliating the doctrines presented, the greater the favor with which they are received. These persons degrade the intellectual powers to serve their carnal desires. To wise in their own conceit to search the word of God with contrition of soul and earnest prayer for divine guidance. 
They have no shield from delusion. Satan is ready to supply the heart's desire. And he palms off his deceptions in the place of truth. It was thus that the papacy gained its power over the minds of men and by rejection of the truth because it involves a cross. A cross. Protestants are following the same path. All who neglect the word of God to study convenience and policy, that they may not be at variance with the world, will be left to receive damn damnable heresy for religious truth. The Apostles Paul speaks of a class who received not the love of truth that they might be saved. He says of this, For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. With such a warning before us, it behoves, it behoves us to be on our guard as to what doctrines we receive. Every conceivable form of error will be accepted. Error will be accepted by those who willfully reject the truth. Satan has different deceptions prepared to reach different minds, and some who look with horror upon one deception will receive will re readily receive another. Among the most successful agencies of the great deceiver are the delusion, delusive doctrines, and lying wonders of spiritualism. Disguised as an angel of light, he spread his nets where, where least suspected. If man would but study the word of God with earnest prayer that they might understand its teachings, they would not be left in darkness to receive false doctrines. But as they reject the truth, they will fall a prey to these deceptions. Next paragraph. Another dangerous heresy is the doctrine that denies the divinity of Christ. Men who have no experimental knowledge of Jesus will yet assume an appearance of great wisdom as though their judgment were beyond question and boldly declare that the Son of God had no existence, had no existence prior to his first advent to this world. This position directly contradicts the plainest statements of our Savior concerning himself. Yet, it is received with favor by a large class who claim to believe the scriptures. With such persons, it is folly to argue. No argument, however conclusive, will convince those who reject the direct testimony of the Son of God. The natural man receiveth not the things in the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned, those who persistently cling to such errors gives evidence to their own ignorance of God and of his Son. Till another subtle and mischievous error is the fast-spreading belief that Satan has no existence as a personal being. That the name is used in scripture merely to represent man's evil thoughts and desires. The teaching so widely echoed from popular pulpits that the second advent of Christ is his coming to each individual at death is a device to divert the minds of man from his personal coming in the clouds of heaven for years. Satan has thus been saying, Behold, he is in the sacred chamber, chambers, and many souls have been lost by accepting this deception. Again, worldly wisdom teaches that prayer is not essential. Men of science claim that there can be no real answer to prayer, that this would be a violation of law, a miracle, and that miracles have no existence. The universe, say they, is governed by fixed laws. Thus, and God himself does, not, does nothing contrary to these laws. Thus, they represent God as bound by his own laws. as if the operation of divine laws could exclude divine freedom. Such teaching is opposed to the testimony of the scriptures. Were not miracles wrought by Christ and his apostles? The same compassionate Savior lives today, and he is as willing to listen to the prayer of faith as when he walked visibly among men. The natural cooperates with the supernatural. 
It is part of God's plan to grant us in answer to the prayer of faith that which he would not bestow. Did we not thus ask? Next paragraph. Innumerable, innumerable are the erroneous doctrines and fanciful ideas that are obtaining uh, that are obtaining among the churches of Christendom. It is impossible to estimate the evil results of removing one of the landmarks, landmarks fixed by the word of God. Few who venture to do this stop with a rejection of a single truth. The majority continue to set aside one after another of its principles until they become actual infidels. And this is the object which Satan seeks to accomplish. There is nothing that he desires more than to destroy confidence in God and in his word. Satan stands at the head of a great army of doubters, and he works to the utmost of his power to beguile souls into his ranks. It is becoming fashionable to doubt. There are many who seem to feel that it is a virtue to stand on the side of unbelief, skepticism, and infidelity, but underneath an appearance of candor and humility, it will be found that such persons are actuated by self-confidence and pride. It is a terrible thing to lose faith in God or in his word. Unbelief strengthens as it is encouraged. Encourage. There is danger in even once in even once giving expressions to doubt. A seed is sown, in which a seed is sown which produces a harvest of its kind. Satan will nourish the crop every moment. Those who allow themselves to talk of their doubts will find them constantly becoming more confirmed. God will never remove every occasion for doubt. He will never work a miracle to remove unbelief when He has given sufficient sufficient Evidence for faith. Next paragraph. God looks with displeasure upon the self-sufficient and the unbelieving who are ever, ever doubting his promises and distrusting the assurance of his grace. They are unproductive trees that spread their dark branches far and wide, shutting away the sunlight from other plants and causing them to droop and die under the chilling shadow. The life work of these persons will appear as a never-ceasing witness against them. They are sowing seeds of doubt and skepticism that will yield an unfailing harvest. Next paragraph, second to the last paragraph. The followers of Christ know little of the plots which Satan and his hosts are forming against them. But he who sits in the heavens will overrule all these devices for the accomplishments of his deep designs. The Lord permits his people to be subjected to the fiery ordeal of temptation, not because it takes pleasure in their distress and affection, but because this process is essential to their final victory. He could not consistently with his own glory shield them from temptation for the very object of the trials to prepare them to resist all the allurements of, the, of evil. Satan is well aware that the weakest souls who abide in Christ is more than a match for the host of darkness, and that should he reveal himself openly, he will be met and resisted. Therefore, he seeks to draw away the soldiers of the cross from their strong fortification, while he lies in ambush with his forces, ready to destroy all who venture upon his ground. No man is safe for a day or an hour without prayer, especially should we entreat the Lord for wisdom to understand his word. Satan is an expert in quoting scripture, placing his own interpretation upon passages by which he hopes to cause us to stumble. We should study the Bible with, a, with humility of heart. While we must study the Bible, okay, with humility in heart, of heart, never losing sight of our dependence upon God. While we must constantly guard against the devices of Satan, we should pray in faith continually. Lead us not into temptation. End of paragraph and end of the chapter 27, The Snares of Satan from this book, The Great Controversy, Volume 4, 1884. Amazing message of warning, the snares of the devil. 
friends. You heard the message from the Lord through LMG Life. Let us continually pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the divine God. He is your Son. And you alone is God the Father, the literal Father, and the literal Son. I praise the Lord for this message. May God present to you. His word, have a happy Sabbath.